the Financial Survival Network, helping you survive and thrive in the new economy. For a free financial survival toolkit and newsletter, sign up at kerrylutz.com, K-E-R-R-Y-L-U-T-Z.com. Fourteen ninety WGCH. This is Kerry Lutz. You're listening to the Financial Survival Network. It's time for another Triple Lutz report. If you remember, a couple of weeks ago, I talked about the value of college, whether or not your child should go, what they're going to get out of it. Is it going to help them with their lives? Will it help them get a job? Will it help them choose a career and be successful at it? And it's been a great topic of discussion lately. It's an article written by a guy by the name of Jack Kelly, former Marine. He works, uh, writes for, I believe, the Pittsburgh Tribune. And this article is written for a specialty news site. I would say it's a little bit on the conservative side, but more into getting into what's really happening economically, politically, and uh, militarily around the world. It's a site called tothepointnews.com. I like it. Been subscribing a while. I've been subscribing to it for a while. And he talks about an article that appeared in Nation, which for those of you who are not familiar with Nation, it's about, uh, it's probably to the left of Barack Obama, if that is possible. And there was an article in the uh, November 21st issue and it's talking about this guy, Joe Therian. He quit his job. He took out $35,000 in student loans to get a master's degree in his passion. Get this, his passion, what he always wanted to do when he grew up, puppetry. And now Therian cannot figure out why he can't get a job. I mean, gee, that's a mystery. Maybe we better have a uh, presidential commission figure out why advanced uh, graduates in puppetry can't find jobs in the new economy right so (laughs) if it wasn't so pathetic it'd be funny but it really ties in to the protesters at occupy wall street and joe believed that uh, hard work and education could bring security and success and Obviously, he's a little bit disappointed, and he's got lots of companies. The fact is, this article goes into a number of uh, statistics about higher, and I put higher in quotes, education. Few students major in subjects that are going to do them any good. More people major in visual and performing arts than in engineering. And I'll tell you what, there's a lot less engineers waiting tables in New York City than there are actors and actresses and other performing artists. And what happened, this has happened since Vietnam, but it's been escalating because there's been a flood of money from the federal government by virtue of federally guaranteed student loans, grants, state grants, Pell grants, I mean... It's almost as bad as uh, what I was talking about yesterday with all the entitlements to SSI and all that, except it's worse because these kids can go into hock for hundreds of thousands of dollars. And these are kids that generally don't know how to balance a checkbook. They're real good with credit cards. They can run up debt, but they don't have a clue how to pay it off. Many of them, I don't want to say all, I'm proud to say my kids uh, have just enough credit card debt to keep them employed. But seriously, this flood of federal money, because Congress kept upping and upping and upping the amount that these kids could borrow. And what do the colleges do? They up the tuition. They up the room and board. They up everything. And of course, they up the outrageous salaries that they pay to these professors and these administrators who are members of unions and their lifetime health benefits and their exorbitant pensions. And you get the point. This just became a feeding frenzy on federal dollars. And who gets hurt? The students. Because what happened was these college These colleges responded to this flood of money by adding more and more useless courses and programs that don't prepare students in the basic areas, 
which is hard sciences and mathematics not to mention writing yeah there's lots of english majors but you got crazy courses we all know about uh, about the sick courses that are often taught in colleges i won't get into that because uh, it's making me long for the good old days when i was in college but i didn't really take many of those bs courses and let's face it 1600 majors offered by american colleges and universities and do you know what the most popular undergraduate major is according to the national study for education statistics it's business 16 percent of graduates and understand a lot of people that enter college go into debt never get that sheepskin that isn't really a sheepskin because they print it on fancy paper now but 16 percent graduate with businesses with a 16 percent graduate with a business degree so what are employers looking for when they're looking to hire they want someone who can think a problem solver not a problem creator not a problem carrier they want somebody who can communicate clearly and forcefully okay that means speaking and writing and they expect you to have some basic knowledge of English grammar you know no those D's Dems and ain't and uh, whatever toity toid and toid they want you to be able to do some math at least a level high enough so that you can fill out your friggin expense reimbursement report they expect you to show up on time they don't expect tattoos all over your body and they don't expect you to have piercings sticking out of every orifice every spot on your face all right that's what they expect you know they don't teach that in college oh you want a tattoo you want to you know you want to like tattoo your scalp great Uh, that's a freedom of expression you're going to do great don't worry about it it's really going to be okay and this is the disconnect between college and the job market and a guy by the name of professor richard aram did a study and he studied 24 colleges in those colleges business students scored the lowest on the college learning assessment which is a test that assesses writing and reasoning skills and they also were last on the gmat exam which is the entry exam for mba programs obviously academic quality is going to vary from college to college but he said it varies inversely with the presence of business education now i think uh, this was said by richard vetter i think that's a little bit unfair he's at a outfit called the center for college affordability and productivity so he obviously occupies a closet uh, in a really bad neighborhood in uh, washington dc because nobody wants to know about college affordability and uh, productivity in fact they want to hush that up so the next most popular majors are history and the social sciences that's 11 percent health sciences eight percent education six percent and he says uh, most education courses are completely vacuous uh it used to be a good career choice to major in education because this degree is a prerequisite for teaching in public schools where the pay has been uh, outrageous the benefits even more outrageous and you can't fire these people even if they can't speak english or teach it or anything else i mean they could be in a plastic bubble in the middle of class you know passing notes to the students and you still wouldn't be able to get rid of these these parasites but interesting thing now that uh, education is getting paid less things are changing education scores uh, are the lowest on all college entrance exams and you know the fact is you know the old saying those who can do those who can't teach those who can't teach teach teachers there's a lot of truth to that and then you got students in public administration social work psychology and there's far more of them than in the physical sciences where they actually could get a job only three percent of these kids are majoring in biological and biomedical sciences no wonder we are losing out to the rest of the world this is just 
proves the case. For women out there, what's really interesting is that they are far more likely to major in what he calls a soft subject. Uh, they constitute 64% of business majors and 86% of education majors. Now, this isn't to say that all education majors and business majors are losers. Uh, I was a business major once, but that was because I couldn't figure out what else to major in. I was really going to go into my family business, so my purposes for being in college were to learn things that I could actually apply and use to make my business successful, which brings us to community colleges. There is absolutely nothing wrong with going to a community college to learn practical courses that can help you succeed in your job, in starting a business, in marketing. You know, these community colleges, the professors there are actually people that have they're actually boots on the ground in the business world. Many of them are adjunct professors who have real life experience, which is why they can't get a job at a regular college because regular colleges are not based in reality, most of them. Now, you, there are studies, some colleges prepare people better than others. Uh, there's no question about that. But the value of a college degree has gone way, way, way down. And some people liken college to a scam, but it's really kind of like a housing bubble. You never know what the true cost of a college education should be. What's happened is, due to the creation of fiat dollars, federal money, the price of a college education has gone into six figures for many. Even if you're in a state school community college, you're still in the high five figures. People can't afford this. It's been increasing double or triple the rate of inflation, the rate of gross domestic product uh, growth, which you know how I feel about that. But even the real rate of growth in the economy, it's probably been 10 times higher. You know, the real rate of college inflation is probably over 10%. This thing is going to crash. All of these obnoxious professors who hate the country, have all sorts of issues with successful business people, they're going to be out on their butts or they're going to find their standards of living cut way, way down and they're actually going to be paid what they're worth. And if that doesn't scare them, then really that degree is even more valueless than we ever thought it was. So what's the upshot here? The upshot is don't borrow money to go to college if you don't plan to major in a field where you can earn enough to repay your loans and earn a well above average income engineers are getting paid in the low six figures you know they i know guys a friend of my son's he's majoring in aeronautical engineering and he's going to make over a hundred thousand dollars a year when he gets out and he's going to be able to pay off his student loans relatively easily. There's always a shortage of these uh, aerospace designers. He's going to get a job. And look, here's the upshot. If you don't know what you want to study, don't go to college until you're sure what you want to do. You can party, you can network, you can look for a spouse for a lot less money than it costs to go to college. And always remember this college administrators are in it for themselves not you for themselves don't believe anything they tell you as with anything else you hear in life even what i tell you verify it independently and if you feel that you got to go to college and it's a very reasonable undertaking major in something that's going to get you a job that will get you out of your parents house and your parents hair the sooner you're out of your parents house the happier everybody's going to be and that's a promise that i can keep i've lived it it's true and that's it signing out kerry lutz triple lutz report <laughs>